Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to talk about a very, very important gadget in algebraic geometry called the canonical, the canonical sheet. Uh, this is a gadget which is a little bit hard to uh, fully motivate and to appreciate. And in fact, my supervisor, Michael Arton, once told me that this is something that you just have to believe in and you have to take on faith. And certainly, uh, it is quite surprising uh, how useful it is in algebraic geometry. Okay, so what's our setting? Our setting uh, will stick to the simple case where we're looking at x as some quasi-projective variety over an algebraically closed field. And to define the canonical sheaf, I first want to have a look at uh, the module of Kähler differentials, which is often denoted with this omega. This is a relative concept, okay, so you can do it in, in, in any sort of uh, relative setting. Uh, here we'll just look at this quasi-projective variety x over the uh, algebraically closed field it's defined over. So essentially what this is, is it should be a notion which is like the cotangent bundle. So let me just remind you how the manifold definition goes. Okay, so if x is smooth, so that corresponds to like a manifold, then what is this omega x over k? It's a type of vector bundle. So it's a vector space varying over this x. And what is it at each point? A little x inside this x. Okay, it's basically just the cotangent space. And one way to think about what the cotangent space is, is to uh, look at mx, which is the space of all functions, okay, which vanish at that x, modulo this, uh, so this is an ideal of uh, functions vanishing at x, and you look at that modulo its square, okay, and this will be dual to the tangent space, okay. So what we want to do now is we want to take this definition and I want to uh, motivate for you the more general definition of a module of Kähler differentials. And the basic idea for doing this is that we want a definition uh, that is not pointwise but works across the whole uh, of x and so that we can work for any x, not necessarily smooth. Okay. So what we're going to do is rather than just looking at one little x inside here, we look at what's called the universal point. So what's the universal point? The universal point, or put simply, is going to be some uh, close uh, sub variety of x cross x. So here's, I uh, suppose, we um, illustrate x cross x as well. Here's a copy of x. Here's another copy of x, and we take the product of these two. And basically, what we have here is we have a diagonal uh, 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 sub variety here. Okay, so that's uh, uh, one way to try to describe it, or how you want to think about it is it's all the set of x comma x where um, x is inside this x here, so where the both coordinates are the same. So it's quite easy to see that, of course, this is the closed subset of this. That's the way you define it in general. It's where these two coordinates are the same. And that defines for you a closed sub-variety, okay? It's clear this is defined by um, algebraic equation, uh, equations. Okay, so this is going to be some closed subset of that. We can talk about its ideal shift. Okay, I delta, and that will be some ideal chief inside O of, or in this case, the product. Okay, so in what sense is it a universal point? Okay, so it's a universal point in the following way. Okay, so suppose uh, we look at any particular point, you want to look at them all at the same time. So, what we need to think of here is that this uh, copy of X here is supposed to parameterize all the points on X. Okay. And then you want to think about what is the sub-variety corresponding of that single point. Okay, so for any point on x, what we're going to do is we're going to stick a copy of the x. So there's a copy of x there. So any point on x, we have that copy of x. And then in this copy of x, okay, what we want to do is we want to have a look at the sub-variety corresponding to that x. So that's going to be on this diagonal, the one which is x comma x. So that's that point there. Okay. So that gives you a particular example of a point, okay, that sub variety consisting of that point, close point, and that's here. And as you vary this parameter along here, okay, you get all the points. So you get all of them, and hence you get the universal point. Okay, so if you change to a different point, okay, you can look above here for that essentially same copy of x, okay, but now uh, the delta gives you a different um, a sub variety okay consisting of that point so this is the universal one and this is the way that you can uh, think about all the points together in one go rather than looking uh, point by point 
Okay, so the module of Taylor differentials uh, is kind of motivated by this idea here. Uh, so here we looked at mx mod mx squared individually at each and every single point. So that means for each point here that corresponds to a single copy of x, we look at this and we look at the, at the uh, mx, the ideal of things vanishing at that x modulo square. But now we want to do this for each and every single one of them. So we want to, instead of looking at mx over mx squared for all these x's, we just have to look at i delta over i delta squared. Okay, i delta over i delta squared. Um, squared and the square here let me correct this so again we just take the square of this um, ideal and it doesn't take it uh, it's not very hard to firstly um, notice the following okay so this is going to be some sort of sheaf that's uh, really uh, it's a sheaf on Delta okay it's really a sheaf on Delta uh, because it's I delta mod I delta squared so I delta annihilates this. So it's really a sheaf on delta. And delta is naturally isomorphic to x, either by, by projecting onto this coordinate or projecting onto this coordinate. It really doesn't matter, OK? So essentially, uh, you get a coherent sheaf on x. And that's the module of Kähler differentials. So what's really nice and what sort of comes out of this definition is that one thing that you might want to do is you want to say, well, here you've got O and you've got an I delta here and here you've got I delta and I delta squared so let's look at go from O all the way down to this ideal shift I delta squared O mod I delta squared okay now of course um, inside here is an ideal which is I delta on I delta squared so that's basically omega x over k okay and if you question by that you get O modular I delta and that's O delta so out of this, you get a natural exact sequence. And it's an exact sequence that actually lives on x cross x. Um, but of course, uh, you can just push it down and think of it as an exact sequence on x. And when you do that, what do you get? Well, basically, here you get some sort of exact sequence. Here is your module of Kähler differentials. And this O delta is just O x. So that means you get an element of this extension space x1 ox from ox into omega x over k or in other words a natural element of since this is x1 of o into something it's just the h1 the first cohomology group h1 of omega x over k so that's really nice is that uh, the way just from the definition of module of Kähler differentials you get this element of the extension space okay now i want to talk about the canonical sheaf um, at least in the, spe uh, the special situation that we're looking at here so essentially it's just a cotangent uh, bundle okay um, uh, uh, or, or rather it's it's uh, um, something that comes from the cotangent bundle okay and um, what's important is the following theorem that i won't prove but it gives you a way of uh, looking at things um, this x this quasi projective variety is smooth if and only if this uh, module of Kähler differential forms is locally free of rank equal to the dimension of x. Okay, so when we motivated it, we looked at manifolds where x is smooth, and then it's just naturally some sort of tangent bundle, so it is a vector bundle. And the thing is that actually it being a vector bundle is kind of equivalent to the smoothness. Okay, so this is kind of a key point here. Okay, so that's a rather nice fact. Okay. So if x is smooth, then we can talk about the canonical sheaf uh, in this rather simple way. Uh, it is defined more generally, but in this case, it has a nice description because this omega x over k is locally free. And what you can do is you can take this top exterior product of that. Okay, so um, this means that uh, you take a wedge up to the dimension of x, and that now becomes an invertible sheaf. So it, it corresponds to a line bundle. It's an invertible sheaf. So this is invertible sheaf. And that's usually denoted with a little omega x. Okay? So this is a very, very important gadget. And it may be not clear uh, immediately why that should be the case. So I, I want to finish this video by giving you some examples of what this is. And essentially, if you're in the manifold situation, it's quite easy to uh, sort of understand what it is. You take the cotangent bundle. Okay, and you just take the top exterior uh, product of that cotangent bundle to get you a line bundle. 
Okay, so uh, what's going on in this particular example here is here we have x is equal to uh, an algebraic group. So an algebraic group could be like um, GLN uh, over C, or it could be like SLN over C, or you could have like a, a, a product of copies of uh, C cross uh, as an example, or an elliptic curve even. So in this case, so what is the module of Taylor differentials? Okay, that's just actually uh, a free sheet, okay? So it's just a number of copies of um, the structure sheaf, OG, and the number of copies is, of course, equal to the dimension of G. And that's quite easy to see from the manifold point of view. Okay, So if you have a group here, okay, um, I want to show you that uh, this cotangent bundle is trivial, and the easiest way to do that is to look at the tangent bundle. Okay, I want to show that this tangent bundle is actually a product of G with some vector space, and that vector space is just the tangent space at 1 tangent space at 1, okay? And so let's just see what the isomorphism is. Okay, the isomorphism is quite simple. Suppose you have a vector inside this tangent space at 1, and you have another group element G here, okay? I want to uh, give you an isomorphism from T1G cross G to this TG, okay? That's going to give you a, a vector bundle isomorphism. And the way it works is the following, is that, well, remember, you can multiply in this group by G, okay? So that give you, gives you a map from the tangent space at 1 to the tangent space at G. Okay, so what you can do is that you can map this vector V over to DG of V. So that will give you a vector over here. And so if we map that to TG1 of V, okay, this is clearly going to be a vector uh, bundle isomorphism. And so that tells you it's trivial. And since that is trivial, that allows you to compute the top exterior product of that is also going to be trivial. So my omega G of, uh, over K is just the structure sheaf in this case. So that's rather nice, okay? So using the symmetry that's encoded in the group here, we see that the canonical sheaf is just the structure sheaf. It's the simplest invertible sheaf you can think of. Okay, let's look at a non-trivial example, and that's going to be given by uh, the projective plane, which I'll write, I mean, or rather the projective line, uh, which I'll write as the union of the affine line with coordinate z and the affine line with coordinate z inverse. And in this case, we can also work out what is this uh, omega, uh, and since this is one-dimensional, okay, and this is smooth, uh, the canonical sheaf is the same as this uh, module of Kähler differentials. Okay, so in this case it's quite easy to see, we can use the uh, cotangent bundle description for what this is, okay. So as a module on A1Z, it's generated by DZ, okay, and it's free, so it's going to be KZDZ, okay, so this has to be some sort of an invertible sheaf here, okay, so it's going to be a free KZ module of rank 1. Okay, and then the generator is dz. And similarly on A1z inverse, it's going to be kz inverse, um, a, a free kz inverse module of rank 1, and the generator is dz inverse. And I guess the only thing that you need to do to work out what is the, um, this uh, canonical sheaf here is to uh, compute what is the descent data. How do you glue these two patches together? And it's done as follows. Okay, so you just localize here uh, to the intersection, so you in invert z to get kzz inverse dz, and you localize this one here to get kz inverse, and you enjoy the inverse of that to get kz inverse z dz inverse. And the key thing that uh, joins the dz to the dz inverse is that you use the uh, calculus to work out the change of variables here. If you differentiate z inverse with respect to z, you get minus z to the minus 2, and so this is dz inverse is minus z to the minus 2 times dz. And in this descent data, of course, dz goes to dz. But if you solve for this, what is dz in terms of dz inverse? It's negative z squared dz inverse. And since the transition function here uh, involves, so you went from the generator, goes to uh, minus z squared times the generator. This 2 there that tells you that the actual uh, invertible sheaf that you need here is O minus 2. So the uh, canonical sheaf on P1 is actually this invertible sheaf here, O minus 2. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.